in the white hot crucible of motorsport, winning is what matters. And that's why Austin Rover are there. There to win, to prove in open competition where there are no excuses for failure, that production-based Austin Rover cars have got what it takes to prove that they are the best. Able to overcome the rigors of international saloon car racing against the finest in the world and come out on top. Able to compete in rallies that'll find any car weakness and show the rest the way home. So, let's go with Austin Rover and see what winning's all about. The 1985 British Open Rally Championship. England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales and the Isle of Man. Glory year for the big, brutal, 300 horsepower Rover V8. And for Britain's top international rally pairing, driver Tony Pond and co-driver Rob Arthur. Victory in four of the six events and a crushing class championship. This is the way to go. Rallying's one thing, but racing's another. But just as tough on man, machine, and mechanic. <laughs> Whilst the mighty Rovers were dominating their rally class in Britain, they were also the class of the field in the prestigious European Touring Car Championship. The magnificent seven, seven wins in Italy, France, Austria, Spain, and Britain more than any other manufacturer. A magnificent start to the year at Monza, where the Italian crowd really appreciate a good car. The Rover team, first, second and third, with a superb victory for Tom Walkinshaw and Wynne Percy. Meanwhile, back in Britain, Tony Pond was driving as only Tony Pond can, putting down every one of the Rover's 300 horsepower every inch of the way, and confidently treading the narrow line which separates maximum speed from disaster, he spectacularly powered to rally win number two in Wales. Unbeatable with a driving style like this. which meant no hesitation in taking the shorter route if necessary. Welcome to Donington and another Rover Tour de Force. Round three of the European Championship. The third successive Rover win with the Rover team, first, second, and third, yet again. In fact, May was a fabulous month for Austin Rover, riding high on the racetracks of Europe and the rally scene too. For this was when the fabulous little four-wheel drive MG Metro made its debut with its full house V6 400 horsepower engine. A sensational package on paper and on the ground, with a magnificent victory for Tony Pond and Rob Arthur in the tough and rugged Argyle Stages Rally, just days after its launch, to prove that once again, Britain had a rally car more than fit to challenge its international rivals for World Championship honours. Just a few days later, Tony Pond was back in Scotland again, 
back at the wheel of the big Group A rover for the Scottish Rally. Back to demonstrate his versatility and Austin rover command wherever it competes, with a third successive victory. This is the stuff that champion cars and drivers are made of. So now a change of scene to the Nürburgring in Germany's picturesque Eiffel Mountains for round eight of the European Championship and Rover commandingly in the lead with four wins behind them already. the pit lane back into the race glorious sunshine spirits are high rover is on its way it was wet in ulster but as ever tony park livened things up for everyone On roads that were sometimes so narrow that it looked difficult to fit the big rover between the banks, Pond, as ever, didn't put a wheel wrong. No one could live with the rover, Pond and Arthur combination. Result? Win number four. The fourth successive win and the British Open Rally Class Championship in the bag. A great rally year for Rover. So on to Belgium in July, with Rovers first and second on the grid for the Spa 24-hour race, the toughest and most gruelling touring car event of them all. On a fantastic circuit with twists and turns, rises and falls on public roads in the beautiful Ardennes countryside. And as ever, the Rovers were there up front. Just watch the red and white go. And now look at this lot go. The cheeky little MG Metros in Britain's premier one-make series, the Metro Challenge. Challenge is the word, for it's all too easy to go off. With 1300 cc, 110 horsepower, and an incredible 120 miles an hour, their performance is almost identical. So it's all down to the drivers. And don't they love mixing it? Door handle to door handle. Silverstone, September 8th. The TT, the most historic and prestigious saloon car race of them all. And the one Rover wanted to win most of all. So now, ride with Rover team driver Jeff Allen. Feel those 300 mighty horsepower. Thrill to 160 miles an hour down the hangar straight and marvel at how Jeff does it. Champion saloon car driver Steve Soper. He's got it all together. But off goes Andy Rouse.
the TT. The fifth victory for Tom Walkinshaw and the appropriately named Win Percy. Well done, Tom. And there's more to come. This was a win really to savour. Every team wants to win its home event, especially when it's the TT. And Rover had done just that. So, hats off to Tom Walkinshaw and his superb team at Kidlington, who had done so much to make Rover the car to beat in 1985 saloon car racing. And as if that wasn't enough, Tom drives them to victory too. But if you think saloon car racing is difficult, how about this? In car with Tony Pond driving his Rover Vitesse absolutely flat out through the narrow roads of the glorious Isle of Man in the Manx Rally. Literally taking instructions from his co-driver as Rob Arthur calls the road ahead from his pace notes. That's real teamwork. Flat right continues to turn past K right. 200. Crest 200. Flag left, a long flat right. Tightens to fast right maybe at side. 70. Long flat left. Gate continues over crest to long flat right over kink. Tightens, keep out. 150. Crest 100, crest and crest along K left. Two hundred, crest the far right, flat left. Fifty seventy. Crest keep left to turn slippy K right over crest gravel. Almost as tight and twisty in its way is the short circuit at Nagaro in France. Scene of a vital round in the French Saloon Car Championship with the cool and calm ex Grand Prix driver Jean-Louis Schlesser slicing his way through the field in his rover. Slicing his way through to become a very worthy champion of France in 1985 and to notch up yet another success for Rover. But that was only a preliminary in a day that Rover will long remember. For next came round 11 in the European Championship. A round in which Rover didn't just dominate their worthy opponents, they absolutely overwhelmed them with yet another first, second and third. And what a sight it was to see the three Rovers finishing in line abreast to take the maximum points. But in spite of all Austin Rover's race and rally success, the acid test of 1985 was this, the RAC Rally, the international debut of the MG Metro 6R4, on which so much time and effort had been spent. And how magnificently Tony Pond and the little MG Metro rose to the challenge fighting every inch of the way in the constant glare of maximum publicity and where above everything else finishing mattered most they did just that in a superb third place having put up fastest time in stage after stage the metro had truly arrived 1985 was indeed a year of achievement for Austin Rover, proving by success at home and abroad that they have the designers, the technicians, the ability and the know-how to get the job done better.